Hello and welcome to FPGA project number 3, Binary Adder to 7 Segment Display. The purpose of this project is to take two 3-bit input buses called A and B, calculate their binary sum and display it on the LEDs and on a 7 segment display. On the LEDs we are going to see the binary value of the sum and on the 7 segment display we are going to see the hexadecimal value of the sum that has values between 0 and F. This project is split in two parts. Let's have a quick project overview. In part 1 we are going to design in Verilog a parameterizable n-bit adder. After this we are going to design a 7 segment decoder. Next we are going to design a Verilog top module that instantiates the n-bit adder and the 7 segment decoder. The width of the adder will be parameterized to the value 3. We are going to test our Verilog modules by creating some test benches to see their functionality. In the end we are going to do a model sim project and three distinct simulations for each individual module. In part 2 we are going to create a Quartus project, synthesize the top module, then connect the design to the FPGA pins and program the DE1's SOC board. Please remember that this project can be also implemented on other Intel FPGA boards. You should be able to customize the project depending on your board number of switches, LEDs or 7 segment display. In the end, on my DE1 SOC board I will be able to do the following. Let's say that A has the decimal value of 7 and B has a decimal value of 1. I should be able to see a 1 0 0 0 on the LEDs which is the value 8 and also the value 8 on the 7 segment display. Let's now take a look on the submodules used in this project. The n bit adder has two n bit input buses and one n plus one bit output. We need an extra bit for the carry bit. Let's analyze an example for n equals 2. The maximum value on two bits is 3, which is 1 1 in binary. So if we add the maximum value for both a and b, we are going to get a value of 6. We can make a generic adder by creating a parameterized module. This module should be synthesizable also for FPGA and ASIC. For FPGAs the Verilog code will infer an n-bit adder which is a pre-existing hardware block inside the FPGA. Let's now take a look at the 7 segment display decoder. This decoder is used to convert a 4-bit number to a hexadecimal code. It has values between 0 and F. This module has by default 4 input pins and 7 output pins. The dot is optional. Each output of this module commands one of the 7 LEDs from the 7 segment digit. These LEDs are also named from A to G in a clockwise manner. The LEDs from a 7 segment are usually connected in two configurations. We may have a common anode or a common cathode. In common anode we have the common VCC and different ground pins and in common cathode we have different VCC and common ground pin. For values between 0 and 15 the digits should look in the following manner. Please remember that I've oversimplified the explanations for these two modules in order to make our FPGA tutorial shorter and more accessible to everybody. If you want to see in-depth presentations and simulations for these two modules, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the course link 
inside the video description. And now it's action time! Please make the following Verilog files. Let's now analyze the content of each file. You first create a folder for this project. Inside this folder, you need three subfolders, RTL, SIM and SYNTH. In RTL we are going to place our Verilog files. In SIM we are going to place the model SIM simulation and in SYNTH we are going to place the Quartus project. Let's analyze the Verilog files. The code for the embed adder is straightforward. We first declare the parameter and after this the input and the output ports. Sum is declared as an output reg because it's going to be used in the left hand side of an always at procedure. The behavioral code translates to the following. Whenever A or B changes, then update the value of sum with A plus B. Let's now look at the testbench code. In the testbench we first declared the time scale. For us it is 1 microsecond divided by 1 nanosecond. After this we have a parameter called adder width that is going to give the final width of our adder. Next we use two reg variables for A and B as inputs and one wire variable for the output sum. Here we instantiate the DUT. Next we connect the end parameter with the adder width parameter. After this we have the instance name and next we connect the ports of the module with the testbench variables. Here we have a simple test scenario where we do the following. We use dollar monitor to print in the console all the changes that occur on A, B or SUM. After 1 microsecond we initialize A and B with 0. Next after 2 microseconds we change A and B with the following values. And so on. Feel free to add extra code in the test scenario to see what happens. Let's analyze now the 7 segment decoder. We first declare a parameter that is going to tell us if we are in common anode or in common cathode configuration. We use 0 for common anode and 1 for common cathode. Next we have the ports list. We use 4 bits for the inputs and 7 bits for the outputs. The dot bit is optional and is not used on the D1 SOC board and I've decided to comment the code. At line 52 we declare some internal logic that is going to be used in our module. I use the reg type because these variables are going to be used in the left hand side of an always at star procedure. This procedure translates in the following manner. Whenever in changes, then update all the values from A to G with this value. These values are created for the common cathode configuration. So for example if you want to represent the value 0 of n, then A, B, C, D, E, F and G need to be updated with the following value. This means that all the bits from A to F are set and only G is cleared. All the other values are declared according to the segments that need to be on or off. Although all the values for the in between 0 and 15 are used inside the case statement, I also add a default line which is a best practice. This prevents latch creation during the synthesis process. In the end I connect the module output ports with our internal variables according to our parameter. Here we connect the module outputs with our internal variables. If common anode cathode is set to 1, this means we are in common cathode mode, we are going to pass to the outputs the exact values of A, B, C, D, E, F and G. Otherwise, if this is set to 0, meaning that we are in common anode mode, we are going to pass the reverted values. So depending on your board, you only need to change this parameter in order to make this decoder work. 
the test bench of the decoder is also straightforward. We declare some variables for the input and the outputs. After this we use a local variable as an integer that is going to be used inside the for loop. Next we instantiate the DUT and connect it to the output ports. And at line 51 we declare our test scenario. We use dollar $Monitor to see the values of A, B, C, D, E, F and G whenever N changes. Next we sweep the value of the input N with values from 0 to 15. We also need to add this over here in order to make the simulation last one more microsecond to be able to see the value 15 changed on the input. And this is the top module. Here we also use a parameter called n that has a default value of 3 and next we have the a input, the b input, the osum output and the hex output. This is going to be connected to the LEDs and this is going to be connected to the 7 segment display. Here we simply instantiate a n bit adder and here we instantiate the decoder. We use osum to be connected with the output of the adder and also osum is connected with the input of the 7 segment decoder. This is possible because osum is an output so it means that it has the wire type. So we connect the wire with the output of this module that goes also to the output of our, our top module but also this wire enters inside the input of the 7 segment decoder. The OHEX output is connected with the individual outputs from A to G. Let's now look at the test bench for the top module. We here declared the local variables. We have also two test bench variables. Next we instantiate the top module. At line 51 we have the test scenario. We use dollar $Monitor to monitor the value of A, B and OSA. I excluded this because we are going to test this on the board and we are going to see if it outputs values from 0 to 15 correctly. We first initialize the value of A and B with 0. Next we use two for loops to sweep the values of A and B with all the values possible on 3 bits. If you update the value of N, then the design and the test scenario will update automatically. All these files can be downloaded from the course link from ovisign.com. Let's now simulate our project. We first open model sim. We press file, close project, if you have an open project of course. Next change directory, you select this folder over here and next you press new project. You write here project, ok, you get this warning because I already simulated this before doing the recording. Next I click yes, add existing file, browse, we go one level up and select everything. Right click compile all. You can see that the files were compiled successfully. Now we press simulate start simulation. And we see that we have here three design files and three test benches. I'm going to simulate first the n bit adder. You see there are no warnings over here. We select our variables, we put them here, and then we start the simulation. If you want to see the numbers displayed in unsigned, then we select them all, right click, radix, 
and unsigned. So you can see that one added with 99 gives an 100. 33 with 66 is 99 and so on. Although we are using a 3-bit adder in our final project, I wanted to show you how parameterizable module can be tested. So, in our test bench, I parameterized the adder with a 10-bit value. So, this means you can create a 10-bit adder and add 10-bit values. Please feel free to add here more test vectors in order to see how our module behaves. Now I'm going to leave you as a challenge to simulate the 7-segment display decoder. Now we're going to simulate the top module only. You click on simulate and end simulation. Yes. Now you click on simulate and start simulation. Expand work and select this over here. Also you can see that we don't have any errors over here. Here we have the test bench variables. We can create a divider if we want to see the individual submodules from our DUT. And we click the DUT and we see our two submodules, the adder and the decoder. I'm going to add only the adder over here. And I'm going to press run all. So you can see here how A and B are swept with values between 0 and 7 to create all the possible combinations for our 3-bit adder. Let's watch in the console for some display results. We have A equals 4 and B 0, then the sum is 4. For A equals 4 and B equals 6, the sum is 10. And so on. Feel free to analyze the test bench results and see if our adder behaves correctly. If you want to see the numbers in a more friendly format, you could select A, B and the sum, right click, radix and press unsign. Now you can easily see if the adder behaves correctly or not. So, for 7 added with 7, we get a sum of 14. This seems right to me. Let's implement now this project on a real FPGA board. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please press the like and subscribe button. If you like this tutorial and you are interested in a practical and easy path to learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my Udemy course called Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.